This is the Emergency Medical Minute. Good morning. Today is going to be a fantastic day. Uh, I was here yesterday and it was truly wonderful. Uh, so one of the bright spots of yesterday was a marginally interesting patient that I had with, um, with some abnormal lab findings. So she was a lady in her 60s who had a history of diabetes and she called paramedics for generalized weakness. And holy smokes, they found her blood sugar to be 37, even though she was awake and talking and not diaphoretic and didn't have any altered mental status. So the first question would be any medication or class of medications that you could think of that might have masked the uh, normal side effects that we think of of hypoglycemia or normal effects of hypoglycemia. Anything come to mind? So beta blockers. Any patient that's on antihypertensive beta blockers can mask some of the effects. Still pretty astonishing that she was normal at 37, but over the course of many hours in the ED, because it was a slow day, her blood sugar kind of ranged from 37 to 60 to 40s, back down to 32, and she ultimately got admitted. This whole time, she was relatively asymptomatic. Her medications, if you had to guess which medication she was on that might cause prolonged hypoglycemia, see me like that. What would it be? Short-acting insulin? No. Uh, so usually the oral agents are the ones that are going to cause prolonged hypoglycemia. And the biggest offenders, um, usually in an overdose situation, are the sulfonylureas like gliburide or glipizide. Those can actually hang around in your system for uh, 24 to 48 hours. So patients who take too much of that can have very prolonged hypoglycemia and need to be admitted to the ICU. Um, this patient took gliburide, actose, and genuvia. So she was strangely on a combination of three different oral hypoglycemic agents and she denied taking an overdose but we don't know why um, so it's been now 24 hours what do you think her blood sugar was this morning yeah, it was like 35 so let's just quickly review what are the interventions we can do for patients with hypoglycemia what's the easiest one it's in the corner right over there Donuts, yeah, food, preferably not donuts, something that's going to last a little bit longer, but food. So we fed this lady for four hours, and she really didn't get any better. So then what do you think our next intervention was? D50. D50. So we get, did give some D50. So D50's advantage is it's quick. Um, it delivers a high volume of glucose, but we don't want to keep repeatedly giving D50. So if we're not doing that, what are we going to do? D5, okay, so we hang D5, hang D5 first, uh, or hung D5 first at a rate of about 150 an hour, then 250 an hour, and she was still hypoglycemic, so what do you think we did next? So that gets to be a lot of volume of D5, right? So we switched to D10, uh, and uh, that apparently is not super effective because her blood sugar is 30 this morning. Uh, anybody know what other, particularly in an overdose situation of sulfonylureas? There's not a reversal, but um, you can hang octreotide, which interestingly we also use for GI bleeders that have uh, varices, right? That generally requires you to be in the ICU, typically just given in overdose situations. And then what's the one other tool that paramedics have besides donuts that they quickly, oh, I can't get an IV, what am I going to do? Or oh, glucose. glucose. Yeah, glucagon. Okay, so glucagon. Oh, and on that note, we will end our medical minute for today. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening. <laughs>